And credibility is when I begin to be a witness to others. When I begin to go into my workplace and I don't have to mention the name of God or Jesus, but there's something on my life that represents the God I serve. I wanna ask you, do people in your workplace know you're a Christian because you tell them you're a Christian or can they tell by the way you live? And what this looks like is I accept others unconditionally. It doesn't mean I accept their lifestyle. Here's the thing, the Holy Spirit's job is to change people. Your job is to love people. Let the Holy Spirit do His job and you just love them. Man, I'm telling you, just, just begin to be kind to the people that are angry. You know, the angry elf at work. They always look like they just got done sucking on a lemon. You know, be nice to that person. Accept people unconditionally. The next thing is this, is encourage others continually. Be the voice of encouragement in your workplace. Here's the thing, I, I, I read this study and it says that workplaces that had employees that exempl exemplify the fruit of the Spirit, it, it does this, it impacts employee engagement, job satisfaction, organizational commitment, and organizational spirituality. You wanna change your workplace, show up with the fruit of the Spirit. But if the fruit of the Spirit comes from spending time in the Spirit, hello. So no wonder why our workplaces are void, our devotion life is void. And we're looking for our employer to give us the fruit that we're called to bring in every single day. The next thing is I'm gonna forgive others freely. I'm not gonna be a grudge holder in the workplace. You know, like I'm not gonna send out the whole email to everybody in the office about who didn't take out the trash, Betty. Like, don't be that person, like let it go. Some of us were like so full of bitterness in our workplace and we wonder why we're miserable. Like exemplify the fruit of the Spirit. It's giving you credibility. Next is to help others freely. It's not just doing my job. Well, it's not my job to do that. I hate that line. I hate that line. If I could just take something out of people's mouth, well, that's not my job. Well, no, everything's your job because you're employed. So y'all okay for a story time real quick? Okay, I got hired, um, I was working at Sonic and uh, I love my job at Sonic. And, and just by the way, I am as happy and fulfilled working at a church as I was doing corn dogs. My joy and satisfaction didn't change when my employer changed because my employer was always God. And so I, I love Sonic. My, I, I got bored with my regular job. So I started memorizing people's orders. So I would memorize your car and I would know your order and I'd wait for you to pull up. And then I'd come on the speaker and say, are you getting a large Coke Zero with uh, cream and vanilla and corn dog, two mustards and a large tear tot extra crispy? And they go, yes, I'm so glad you got it. I'm like, got it, we'll have it right out. I, I loved it, it was my challenge. So I always did this for different people. Well, this guy would come through every day and I had his order memorized. Well, I didn't know this guy was starting a bank in our town. And he got together with his board and they're like, who do you wanna hire? And he goes, I already know, she works at Sonic. So he rolls up to Sonic and I saw him pull up and I said, hey, I got your order in, is it the same as usual? He said, yeah, but can you bring it out? I said, no problem. So I brought it out he said, listen, I wanna hire you. And I said, okay, so he hired me as a teller. So I started working as a teller and I would get bored because there wasn't a lot of foot traffic. So then they moved me to commercial teller and that was still boring to me because I was moving through my work so fast. So then I saw the president's uh, loan processor and I noticed she was always busy. So I went over to her and I said, hey, if you've got extra work, I can do it. She goes, have you ever processed a loan? I said, no, but I promise you I'll learn. And so I, I started doing, uh, I started learning parts of her job. So she was getting ready to go on vacation. And the president of the bank called her in and he said, I don't know what we're gonna do for two weeks, you're gonna be gone. And she goes, well, actually, I've been teaching Crystal my job. She works as a teller over here. And so she's been actually doing a lot of my job and I think she can do it. So for two weeks, they met with me. Do you mind filling in her spot? I was like, no problem. So I was doing it. Well, I got through all the president stuff. So I went over into the vice president's office and I said, hey, do you have any work? Cause I'm bored, I have, I'm done. I did all my files. They're like, you've done everything. I've done it all. Everything's done, everything's caught up. Okay, yeah, here's the stack. Can you have it done by the end of the day? Absolutely. So I get to the bottom of it. Well, homegirl comes back from her two week vacation. President meets with her and says, I'm sorry, we're actually gonna let you go. Cause when you were gone, she was doing your job and the vice president's processing. And so we're gonna let you go. When I left the bank, they had to hire four people to replace me. Do you work with that level of excellence? 
And when I left the bank, I was making more money in the short amount of time than what I had gotten hired on. You're wondering why you're not promoted. It's because you're scrolling Facebook on company time and you're wondering, well, they just don't promote me. No, you're just not excellent. You're just actually lazy. I had one of my kids' friends, we were over the other day. They go, well, I just need a job. I said, well, have you thought about Chick-fil-A? It's a great Christian company. You're off on Sundays. They go, no, they're just too mean to work for. I said, what's mean to work for? Well, you can't look at your phone the whole time you're there. I said, oh, novel idea. You actually have to do your work while you're at a job. Do you know the number one most searched uh, thing on Google about jobs? I I looked into this while I was getting ready is how to make the most money for the least amount of work. You know what the answer was? Politician. (laughs) All right, next level up the rung. Generosity. It's when now I go to work so I can give to meet the needs of others. I, I go to work and I pull an extra shift so I can make somebody else's car payment. I go to work and I work overtime because I wanna pay for another kid to go to camp. There was a business owner here in our church and he had one of the most amazing uh, contracts that's ever come into his company. And he said, Crystal, this isn't just gonna bless me right now, it's gonna bless us for the next 15 years. He said, I'm so excited because now I have a 15 year strategy of how I'm gonna sow into the church. I wanna challenge you that you wanna talk about job satisfaction is when now when I clock in, I know that God's gonna bless me. He's gonna bring it to me, but it's gonna go through me to others. That I'm able to now to give, to make a difference, to make an impact on somebody else. So when I do their sonic order and get drinks for everybody in the office, I'm not having them Venmo me $1.75. I say, you know what? I'm paying everybody's drinks today at the office. Y'all didn't like that. Don't Venmo request somebody for a dollar. Just be generous, amen? Next level up is this, is eternity. Eternity is to be rewarded in heaven. God is watching how you work. And in Colossians, it says this in 324, it says, knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men. Your W-2 doesn't, it's not your reward. Your paycheck that got deposited, that's not the reward. It's this, that you will receive the inheritance, which is your greatest reward. It's not the Christmas bonus. It's not the sales bonus. No, it's when you get to heaven, he's gonna say, Crystal, I saw the way that you honored me with the ketchup at Sonic. I saw the way you honored me with that business transaction. I saw the way that you mopped those floors. I saw the way that you straightened those chairs. I saw the way that you bust those tables. I saw the way that you waited those tables at Olive Garden. I saw the things that you did. And here's the reward because the whole time it is the Lord Christ whom you are actually serving. I wanna ask you this, if God was your employer, would you keep showing up late for work? If God was your employer, would you spend the last hour of every day just sitting at your desk, counting the minutes to clock out? Or would you work with honor? Would you work with excellence? Would you work with integrity, knowing that your life is making a difference?